Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. The one thing about the NBA, I know leagues wish it was true, but it's not. There's been this sense that, you know, market size doesn't matter because players can get rich in Oklahoma City or New Orleans. Right, just like yep. a guy in Boise can make more than everybody in New York if he has a deal with McDonald's, sure. <laughs> like to produce their French fries, which for a long time was Jay. Oh, that's actually a he. That's a guy. Oh, I thought you yeah. were making that up. That's actually a guy. A guy in Idaho had the I McDonald's forget it. It was contract or whatever. Was okay, got it. Go ahead. Yeah, for a long time, the richest guy in Boise was richer than the richest <laughs> guy in New York. Right, so, um, but I'll push back on markets do matter first. The players do want to play in your Miamis, your L.A.s. It's a winter league. There's a history. Players don't choose Milwaukee. The second thing, I'm going to go back to the first NBA game I remember watching. So when I was a little kid, I would cut out pictures. There was a, a, a board by my bedroom almost styrofoam. My dad put up there. You could put needles yeah. and, and posters on it. And Elmore Smith was a 6'9 Lakers center. And I started putting sports stuff up. I remember Elmore Smith was the first one I put up. And then there was overtime. And he was a Lakers center back when the Lakers, like pre-Wilt yeah. and pre all this. Yeah, I think it was around that time or may have been post-Wilt, pre-Wilt, whatever. It would have been, so, for your age, it would have been post-Wilt, pre, post -wilt, pre uh, right. yeah, but go ahead. Showtime. Yeah, yeah. it was 70s. Like early 70s. Yep. So I go back and I look at the biggest stars in the league. So when I first watched, it was either Jerry West or Wilt, yeah, Los Angeles. And then it was, after that, very quickly, Dr. J, Philadelphia. Yeah. And by the way, Dr. J, and, New Jersey in the ABA. You know, it might as well be yeah. New, you know, New York Metro. Okay. So it was Jerry West, L.A., Jerry and Wilt. It was yeah. old Wilt. And then it was Dr. J. And then the league went through a little while there. It didn't really have a star. And then... It was L.A. Magic, Boston Bird, yeah. MJ Chicago, yeah. Shaq and Kobe, L.A., LeBron, Outlier Cleveland, Jordan, Chicago, right? Steph, San Francisco. LeBron is the only face of the league in a small market. Now, Cleveland has always played bigger because they have such a rich history with all their sports. It may be losing, but the Cleveland well, Browns are like the Cincinnati Reds, right? Like kind of a bedrock franchise. So that this idea that markets don't matter, and the reason I say this is, the danger for the NBA and they've got their money is Denver, Minnesota, Oklahoma City, Indiana, that Jalen Brunson with like a KD, we may not have a face of the league coming up, but they will become the franchise. Oh, that, the well, listen, people have been... The New York Knicks have not won a title since 1973. The New York Knicks have been to two finals in the last 50 years, and one of them, they got their heads handed to them in the lowest rated season ever, first <laughs> season post-Jordan, lockout year, 50 yeah. games. And yet, they are, over that same time frame, you know, top five most talked about team. You are seeing it right now. The fan base is rabid. You have a disproportionate amount of media members who care about the team or root for the team or whatever. Yes. They are yep. dying for this team to matter, dying for it to matter in a way that is, th th there are some similarities to like what the football media does with the Cowboys and what basketball media does with the Knicks, except the Cowboys, at least in my lifetime, had a dynasty and have had multiple good teams with no great teams. The Knicks have only had a handful of good teams, no championships, and only really came close once ever in 94. Uh, and so I, I think your point on market size is multi-layered in a lot of ways. I think that guys will always young rich usually single guys are just also yeah. going to want to go pool places and live somewhere yeah. awesome and that is <laughs> yeah. and again i'm from kansas city and i love kansas city but if i were 24 with 30 million it would suck like that you know what i mean yeah. it is it's we're blessed 
that Mahomes was like, I'll buy a piece of the Royals. My wife will buy a soccer team. And you know what I mean? We'll just basically become king and queen of the city. Um, or else you can outgrow it. Also, football, you don't have to be there as long as you have to be there during the year as basketball and, and baseball. I think this Knicks run is important for the league. I do think that. And I think there is. So do I. And so do I. I think that your point on if they were to get a Durant, and it wouldn't even have to. The thing is this. Jalen Brunson scored 40 in three straight games. I did not. I'll tell you the. I'll tell you a funny story. Nobody, Nobody did. did. So I'll tell you a funny story. Let me turn this light on, see if my lighting is a little bit better. I know it's a little dark where I am. Sorry about that. I should turn it on before. Um, so I was at Philly Knicks game four in Philly. So, uh, and I had, I was very fortunate. I had amazing seats. So I'm basically right between the Knicks bench and the scorers table where they, uh, and there's, Row one courtside, row two courtside, feet on the wood, and then row AA, which is the first uh, row that isn't feet on the wood. So that's where I am. In between the first and the second quarter, Rick Brunson, Jalen's dad, who's a coach on the Knicks, yeah, sees yeah. me. And he's like, hey, you owe my son an apology. And he's smiling <laughs> when he says it. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you know what I mean. You owe him an apology. And I think it was because when they signed him, because there's a clip that Nick's Twitter put, you know, put out of everyone who was wrong about Jalen. When they signed him, I'm like, listen, he's a nice player. But if he's your if he's your third best, I think what I said was if he's your third best guy, you can win a title. If he's your second best guy, you can be good. And if he's your best guy, you're not a good team. I it was what I thought. Like, I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. The so whole league. Right. I don't think it was a terrible take. It ended up being. And so I'm like, I've already said I was wrong. He was like, you need to say it on TV. And I'm like, buddy, <laughs> I'm like, I had him fourth on my MVP ballot. Now, I don't actually have a ballot per se, but right. in my when right. I list him on the show. And so he's like, he's like, oh, OK, cool, cool. But you know how I talk. I talk like this with my hands. He's kind of similar. His back is to the court. He has now walked like right to the scorer's table and I've stood up to talk to him. So we're not like nose to nose, but we're leaning in, having, you know, a very friendly, great conversation. Second quarter is about to start. One of the reps jogs over and pats him on the shoulder and is like, hey, do we need to kick that guy out? Thought, thought, he, thought he and I were arguing. And Rick, to his credit, started laughing. He's like, no, he's, he's he, he, I think he even said, that's my buddy, which is nicer than I deserved. He's like, no, we're cool. And then the ref yeah. maybe recognized me and like re realized everything was fine. But in the moment, I was like, oh, man, that would have been the ultimate power move by him if he'd have said to the ref. In fact, yeah. <laughs> you know why you're getting kicked out? Because three years ago, you were wrong about my kid. Now you're out of here. Um, That doesn't really, that doesn't really answer your question. But yes, the, the Knicks being great, it's also why here's another kind of spin off to that take. How awful are Brooklyn Nets fans? You had the you had Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, James Harden. No one cared. No one in the city cared. Like it was like the the Knicks have one guy and a team that plays so hard. And they are infiltrating Philadelphia. The tickets are $600 to get in. The Nets were on yeah. deep playoff runs against Giannis. And people were like, yeah. eh, do I want to go to Barclays in Brooklyn? It's unbelievable. You know what? Well, you know what it is. It shows you the power of it's brand. It's the Clippers the Lakers. John, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. The late John Madden. Uh, Eric Shanks has brought this up before. Uh, you know, John Madden was the only football broadcaster of note that literally moved a rating. Yeah. Now, sports gambling now moves ratings. Sure. People don't leave bad games. You can see it. So we know that if you're if you have money on games and as as the rollout of legalized gambling happens in America, it's helping television. Yep. People have more vested financially they stay in games, but John Madden was the first and maybe only broadcaster to do that. And he always had a theory. 
say the game out loud. Does it sound like a big game? And he said, when you say Packers Niners, oh, that's got to be a big football game. They can both be four and six. It oh, feels yeah. like a big, what the New York Knicks have always felt big. Even when they stunk the last 20 years, you, if the Knicks, here's all you need to know. Jordan goes there. Kobe goes there. It felt big to them. They could be 12 games under 500. Michael Jordan and Kobe, it was like, I'm going to New York. I'm going to put on a show. So New York just is. It just feels big. 100%.